I'm walking up the drive to Model Farm in Ross on Wye. I'm going to go speak to the farmer Simon Cutter about uh, his farming methods as a pastoral farmer and also why he doesn't supply to any of the supermarkets, he just supplies to customers directly. Just going up the drive I can see in the distance a beautiful big whitewashed farmhouse and I'm surrounded by acres and acres of land. It's quite a big farm. I'm going to go and meet Simon in the barn because I think that's where a lot of the animals are. Breed of pig are they? They're Hampshire pigs. 13 of us in the country keep Hampshire pigs, so they're quite unusual. There's a boar and six sows and then all their piglets, so we might have 60 piglets at any one time. The little lambs? So they're, oh. they're not, it's so cold we're keeping them in the shed a bit, the, the twins. And um, yeah, so they've got some shelter in here. These are our Hereford cattle, these are all the bulls. Yeah, so they're having grass silage because we've uh, we're sure that um, these day and age we should not be feeding cereals to cattle and sheep. We should just be feeding them good silage, which is was grass. It's pickled grass, basically. You, you could smell it if, if you should have a... So it is pickled. Oh, it's strong, yeah. yeah. pickled strong with... So it, it's pickled with acid, so it's the cheapest way of making your winter feed. But um, you can see they love it. You know, we're trying to, to avoid use of antibiotics and everything. We're trying to keep the animals as healthy as we can. Because there is this issue of if the animals have too many antibiotics, then um, the antibiotics don't work so well on humans. Some farmers would give pigs antibiotics every day, and we would. It would be once in a blue moon any pig got an antibiotic. You feed them differently to supermarket cattle. Yeah. What health benefits are there in the meat for humans? Well, it's because it's because of the long chain and omega three threes are there from the pasture, and um, it's, the saturated fats are a lot less. So it's, it's a much more healthy meat. Basically, what, what nature's been doing for 3,000 years turns out to be correct, doesn't it? Does it cost more to, to farm like this? Cost less. Cost less. Because um, we're not buying in corn and buying in inputs. We're growing all our own inputs and keeping the farm in balance. Corn could be feeding starving people in Africa. Corn could be feeding humans everywhere. Why feed it to cattle? These cattle will do, you know, they do perfectly well eating grass which is what they were meant to do and by grazing pasture we're sequestrating carbon it's tons and tons and tons of carbon and um, that's you know that's beneficial for the environment as well isn't it this is the first pastoral farm that i'd come across so i asked simon how many are there across the country in the um, pasture fed livestock association there's about um 40 40 people at the moment but a lot more are in interested if the market started to take off. I think once consumers start demanding the health benefits, um, there'll be a lot more, because it's a lot better way of, um, of doing things. Out of the 40 members, not a single one supplies to the supermarket. So I asked why this was. Supermarkets wouldn't want these animals because they say they're too small. And so the cost of production and processing is, is higher. But the flavour and the way they're grown, it's uh, much better. The, the, the ethos of the group is that we'll supply straight to consumers because the supermarkets would then try and twist the rules and say, oh, feed a little bit of corn or feed a little bit of that and it would be out of control. I was interested to know if the horse meat scandal had increased the demand for his produce. It's made old customers that perhaps slip back to the supermarket come back to us. So in that respect, it has focused people's minds on it. But, but our demand has always been pretty steady and we're selling pretty well everything we produce so um, you know we couldn't we can't suddenly expand it would take five years to produce one more beef cattle by the time it's conceived and grown that's a five-year cycle so you know it, we're in it for the long term the weather was just so cold that we had to go inside for a cup of tea to warm up and a bit more of a chat <laughs> I 
Simon had already expressed quite a lot of negativity about supermarkets, so I asked him, has he ever supplied to them before? We've grown potatoes here for Tesco's before and had to use copper sulphate, and then we find after, in the year after, the copper is toxic to, to sheep. So the, the stuff we're using to kill blight on potatoes, to keep potatoes nice, kills the sheep grazing the grass after. And I don't think enough is known. It's been quite an eye-opener for the guy running our little gardening club, how many chemicals are allowed in an organic system. And um, it's, uh, I think most consumers assume that there are no chemicals involved in it. You know, it, it's so so tight and you know so expensive to grow for the supermarkets you know but i'm not sure it's what the consumer wants i'm sure the supermarkets haven't asked you how many chemicals you want on your potatoes have they it was true of course i've never been asked what i want on my fruit and veg so what's the future for pastoral farming in britain yeah i think it'll be um a major um the price of cereals has has cost the cost to farmers has gone up and up and up as um, we've, there's been some bad harvests and bad harvests around the world, and I'm sure it doesn't actually pay if farmers actually did their sums. It wouldn't pay to be feeding too much corn. So I think they should keep more traditional breeds and grow them on grass. They would be a lot better off. They may actually make more profit. That was Simon Cutter from Model Farm in Herefordshire, and I've been Sarah Collier for Staffs Live. <laughs>